share information about the present and the past. These photographs, taken in 1988 in Egypt, the land of pharaohs and pyramids, and seen by very few people, were published in Germany for the first time by Bild newspaper. A giant was visible in the photo. The fingerprint was probably cut with an axe and mummified. Some places have collapsed. A leathery skin with broken pieces. A split nail. Yes, this is a finger belonging to a terrible being and it is 38 centimeters long. German newspaper Bild caught a strange and impressive story in Egypt. These photographs, taken in Egypt, the land of pharaohs and pyramids, in 1988 and seen by very few people, were published in Germany for the first time by Bild newspaper. Gregory Spory, who took the photo, is a very competitive businessman in Basel, Switzerland. During a special research he conducted in 1988, Spoeri came into contact with an old man who had been engaged in grave robbing as his father's profession from generation to generation. The meeting was held in a village house 100 kilometers away from Cairo. The theft of the tomb netted Spoeri $300 in exchange for just viewing this unsold treasure. Businessman Spoeri made the following statement to Build Newspaper. It was wrapped in bone, leather, and old cloth. This was a long tidy package. There were traces of mold. I was completely baffled by the dark brown debris of it all, I was allowed to handle it and also take photos. I was placed next to the total for a size comparison. The bent finger was cracked and covered in dried mold. This surprising finger weighed barely a few hundred grams. The grave robbers showed signs of authority and x-rays of the fingers. Both dated back to the 60s. The grave robber said he would definitely not sell fingers. Apparently this is ancient, so and it was very, very important to his family. Speaking to Bild, Spoeri says that he regrets it today only to return home with his photographs and says. Many years had passed. He was not interested in the scientists' relationships, it was incomprehensible. Spoeri explains the reason for waiting all these years as follows. I didn't want the finger to be a clown in their hands. I shelved the story. Until 2009, when I went back to Egypt to investigate the old Arabs and where it was located, I saw no trace of the training. Now Spoeri examines everything about the relic, especially the myths about giants, and says. Have you experienced giants in Egypt? Roman historian Flavius Josephus reports that there were such giant creatures in the history of Jewish warfare. There were giants here. They were very large and different from normal people. They looked terrible. They could see it with their own eyes, they couldn't believe how big they were. Did giant people really live? Giants, large, hulking creatures that resemble humans. These creatures, which we are used to hearing about in fairy tales, legends, and mythologies, are strangely known by almost all societies in the world. They are often mentioned as supernatural creatures that resemble a gigantic human, but are dumber than humans. Although they can be men or women, they are depicted as physically very strong. Especially in mythology and legends, Giants are seen as more serious, hostile to humans and gods, independent and angry monsters who believe that they can do anything thanks to their physical strength. In fairy tales, the situation is a little different. The giants in fairy tales are described as very large creatures that are far from serious, can be made fun of by children, have low intelligence, and generally feed on humans. In Greek mythology, Giants are described as gods or demigods, creatures that generally disrupt order, mess with heroes, and cause unrest to those around them. In ancient Greece, there is a belief that giants lived on the earth before humans, and that humans existed on these lands later. The famous Greek historian Homer mentions a one-eyed giant named Polyphemus in his writings. In the D.D. Corcut stories, there is a giant named Tepigos who has only one eye. These giants, who brought disaster to the Ogre's tribes, live in the mountains and eat people and sheep. According to the story, Basat, 
an ogre's lord, later killed this giant. In Scandinavian mythology, giants are described as a cruel race that is at war with gods and humans. It was stated that they lived in the air, land, and water and they were shown as demigods. According to mythology, God Thor intervened against the giants who were about to destroy humans and erase the giants from the earth. In the Mayan and Inca civilizations, it was believed that giants existed before humans, just like the ancient Greeks. In ancient inscriptions found in Mexico, it is written that most of the giants disappeared as a result of natural events, and the surviving giants were massacred by humans. An interesting source is the Torah, which gives a very wide place to giants and even talks about giants as if they were real creatures. What is written in the Torah tells how the famous giant Goliath was killed by the prophet David and how humanity eliminated the last giant. The common feature of all these tales, legends, and mythologies is that giants exist. But in the end, the giants are killed or destroyed. So the world remains to the people. Well, if we leave all these legends aside and come to our recent history, the famous Portuguese sailor Magellan said that he saw giants during his voyage to the American continent. According to the writings of Antonia Pigafida, who was with Magellan, in June 1520, sailors came face to face with a giant in the region that is today Argentina. Antonia Pigafida, who was shocked by what she saw, wrote, he was so tall that our head did not reach his waist. His voice resembled that of a bull. British sailor Sir Francis Drake also described that an indigenous people lived in the same lands as Magellan, the shortest of which was 3 to 3.5 meters. There are many stories and descriptions claiming to have seen giants like these events. So, is there any concrete evidence to prove the reality of giants? Studies on the bones of a giant were made by the famous writer Giovanni Boccaccio in the 14th century. In his book Genealogy of the Gods, the famous author talks about a giant skeleton found in a cave in Trapani, Sicily. The 10-meter-long bones were preserved for 300 years, but after hundreds of years passed, these bones suddenly disappeared in the 17th century. Another incident occurred in Switzerland in 1577. During an excavation, workers come across a human corpse approximately 6 meters tall. Dr. Felix Plater, the famous anatomist of the time, explains that this belongs to a prehistoric human. After hearing about the incident, the Swiss state took control of the incident and closed the incident by saying that these were actually elephant bones. The giant fossil called Diafossil, 3 meters and 70 centimeters long, found during the mineral excavations carried out in 1895, was lost shortly after it was found. In an article published by Dr. Pronounced. Louis Berkelter, one of today's researchers, it is stated that a giant human race lived 350,000 years ago. And he says that he will prove this scientifically and show it to everyone. Although nothing has been proven scientifically yet, there is no other creature whose existence is so widely mentioned by every society in the world. Considering the fact that 30-meter-tall dinosaurs lived millions of years ago in the lands we now set foot on, the possibility that giants might have lived too is not far-fetched.